Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to HR Katha Presents Happiness at Work, powered by happiness.me, a global community of experts who bring on board a happiness system to create flourishing work cultures. With this show, we continue with our journey of finding what keeps the Indian workforce from various sectors happy. Today, uh, we have Kamlesh Dangi, the group HR head of the new age financial services company, Incred Financial Services. Kamlesh uh, started his career in manufacturing, but has spent a large part of career with finance companies, ICICI Bank, Religear, UTI, Mutual Fund. For the last three and a half years, he has been with Incred. Kamlesh today will share with us what it takes to keep the people in the financial sector a happy and an engaged lot. Welcome to the show, Kamlesh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for me having me here. Welcome. My pleasure. Uh, tell me something, you know, it's, is it really difficult or a tricky job to keep, uh, you know, the finance professionals happy? You know, the, the general notion is that they are totally driven and obsessed by numbers. Um, yes and no. I mean, they are supposed to be good at numbers. Um, yeah. So in that sense, those who would prefer finance profession are likely to be those who are comfortable with numbers. Numbers, yes. Uh, so in, in that sense, that is right. But uh, that does not necessarily mean all those who come to financial services are good at numbers or vice versa, that all people who are good at numbers necessarily numbers. come to financial services. They, they do go to many other industries as well. I mean, it's just another industry, right? Yes. So, yeah, so, I mean... No, no, because what I, what I meant is that, you know... Uh, when you talk of when you think of an uh, you know a finance company it is largely you know you think of people who are very driven and obsessed by numbers it largely comprises of people so you know what does it take to keep that lot you know uh, that set of employees or that set of workforce a happy lot you know uh, is is the nuances very different is the rules very different because their expectations could be very different. I'm saying, if you compare it with an probably with an IT sector or an uh, you know a manufacturing setup, there are different kinds of people. People yeah. come from you know the background is different. Probably you know the mindset is thinking is different. So obviously their happiness quotient could be different. That is um, that is um, kind of right. I, I'll say because you know financial sector is very wide, right? Yes. I mean, at, at one end, you're talking about, um, you know, uh, sales professionals, be it for insurance or for, uh, you know, credit cards or, or yeah. you know, uh, you know, bank deposits kind of stuff. So it could uh, be retail and, banking. It could be somebody, you know. So In that sense, problems. they're not very different than many other industries, to be very honest. Okay. But on the other side, there is a treasury equity derivatives some very exotic stuff that happens in maybe investment banking. Uh, those are different set of people, um, okay. uh, highly educated, very sharp in their numbers. And, and they preferred that profession or chosen that profession because, you know, they're good at those numbers, right? So, yeah. so they are driven very differently. Um, at, at one end, some of those who have come there are very vocal that, uh, you know, I'm here for earning more money. Right. And that matters to me more than anything else. And that's my biggest motivator. But that's a very small section of, uh, you know, kind of finance professionals. A large set of um, finance professionals, I don't think are any different than many other industries. Yeah, I think yeah, what true. motivates uh, somebody in FMCG or somebody in manufacturing or somebody in uh, IT is not very different than what motivates somebody in financial services, barring that very small section of people. I would say. Okay. So how do you define happiness at the workplace, you know? Is there certain parameters that uh, would decide that, you know, this, this is a happy lot or this, you know, branch or this office has got a lot of happy employees? Is there, is there a parameter or do you, do you, you know, the nuances are different? Um, I, not because it's a financial services, but I, I think... Oh, yeah, um, I'm, so, I'm talking about generally. You know. Generally, I think um, I think the word happiness needs to be you know put it in the right context because okay. um, 
I, I don't think it needs to be read in the same way as we look at happiness at family uh, or when you're alone around your family. Your personal life, you mean, yeah. Uh, because I think it needs to be contextualized. We, we Most of the organizations uh, uh, are commercial organizations. They're there for a purpose. They have a particular vision, mission, which has uh, commercial objectives uh, associated with them. And um, therefore, you know, it, it's not like, you know, would we all prefer an unproductive, happy employee or, um, you know, um, a, a highly productive, um, neutral unhappy. employee? Right? I mean, somebody who is not ne necessarily happy or unhappy, uh, which lot we would pick up, right? In a, in a very commercial yeah. context, I would pick up somebody who is later, who is very productive from a very commercial context. I'm talking about an employer, yeah. you, right? Uh, Certainly. That doesn't yeah. mean that I don't I don't want people to be happy, but I think uh, the point is what is more important is how engaged they are with the organization, because okay. as I said, you know we we all here work in an organization for a particular purpose. I'm I'm employed here as an employee. Uh, and there is an objective to it. There is an objective yes. to it. Yeah. Yes. So I I don't think happiness needs to be measured outside of that objectives. I think within the kind of um, uh, boundaries of those objectives, it's very important for somebody to, um, uh, you know, like what they're doing, you yeah. know, um, um, feel passionate about, um, you know, what has been asked to deliver and uh, they feel involved, they feel appreciated. Um, all of it is very, very important. So, you know, without that, then, you know, uh, we're not talking about human beings, right? Then we are talking about machines which have no feelings associated with nobody would prefer to work in an environment like that people Certainly would not. should enjoy working but that is not at the cost of organization object and that's why i think engagement is a little better word than happiness because happiness uh, because of a general understanding of the way the word we have kind of used in our life it kind of tends to go all over but engagement or you know how engaged is your staff which you can't be engaged if you're unhappy right so um, while um, uh, you can be happy and not engaged. So, therefore, the preference of word is okay. engagement. Is rather than... engagement side. Yes. Now, generally, people say, you know, you said that, you know, we could have a set of employees who are, uh, say, productive, but be neutral. Or, you know, somebody could be happy, but be unproductive. Generally, people, you know, I have seen people uh, basically connecting productivity with happiness. They, they they like to believe that you know if I've got a happy set of employees, productivity is going to go up. So you 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 actually disagree to it? Uh, no, I I would say it's actually more true the other way around, right? If I'm productive, okay. if I know I'm able to deliver, I'm likely to be very happy with the job I'm doing, right? Um, yeah. uh, and if I'm doing things which I don't like any which way, then I'm not likely to be productive, right? So um, uh, it's it's like you know a lot of our uh, happiness is arrived from the success that we achieve, right? Yes. So I, you know, I, uh, if I, if I score very well in my tenth exam, twelfth exam, uh, I tend to be happy, right? I mean, all human beings would uh, be happy if they have achieved yeah, so something. It is, yeah, it is easier to say that you know materialistic things don't give us happiness, but it it does. It. Yeah, and I, I mean, see, you know, it 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 need not be something big. I mean, if if I am able to deliver well on a particular project, if I am able to deliver it on time, if if my stakeholders are happy with my delivery, I I tend to be happy. I mean, I have no reason to be unhappy of a good job that I have done, right? So yeah. I think, uh, you know, a, a productivity would drive happiness uh, uh, rather than. Happiness, happiness would drive, drive, drive productivity. I mean, it's not, it is not, I'm not saying it is not linked at all. But yeah. if I have to kind of compare what will drive what, um, happiness, again, I'm saying if happiness, if you contextualize in the organizational, um, you know, objectives and those boundaries, yeah. then, then yes, then what is said is in terms of that kind of happiness, which I would define it as engagement, would yeah. certainly drive uh, productivity, right? But happiness in the if you don't put it in that context, then it not necessarily will drive productivity. You know, uh, then it, it can it can drive many other things, but um, productivity. It can as right. well, but it not necessarily always, right? And so happiness could be, you know, to each it could be its own. You know, some people might be happy with certain things. You know, 
some people might be happy not coming to office i'm just saying you know the more yeah. leaves that you get people could be happy so yeah i mean if you if i mean i remember at start of my career there were uh, you know all these surveys employee surveys used to be yes. called employee satisfaction surveys satisfaction right? surveys a lot yes. of it is moved to an employee engagement survey right because yeah. the whole context was um am i happy uh, am i satisfied with uh, the salary i get most employees yeah. will say no i want more salary but if you ask the same question that do you think you are fairly paid for the efforts that you are putting in maybe some of them will um, you know kind of same. answer differently right so uh, are people feeling um, uh, kind of treated equally are they feeling treated fairly that becomes more important rather than a satisfaction or happiness which may not have boundaries right i mean how much salary in a commercial organization can keep increasing right can somebody say i okay give me only 30% increment and you know don't give me more than that right generally people yeah. will say give me as much as you can right i mean that's that's a human tendency right so in that context it is important to define that what is the right percentage where you feel that uh, you you are kind of fairly treated in the organization against the effort that you're putting in i think that you know i'm just giving example as one yeah. question but you know there are many others but it's important to look at it in the context of uh, uh, if if they feel treated fairly if they feel treated equally they feel involved they they they're excited about the organization objectives you know they're likely to be more engaged and they yeah. likely to be productive which in general sense a more engaged employee or more productive employees is surely likely to be a more happy employee i'm not going to drop my shoulders when i start going home when i you know i have been appreciated at home at work and i have got uh, rewarded and i feel you know being treated fairly i am likely to be happy otherwise Always. right i mean that's what i'm saying it's driven that's more that human way. nature yeah but uh, you know suppose if you, when we are evaluating a, a workplace or any it could be any given workplace you know if we say that you know if we feel that you know people are craving less or people are complaining less they are a satisfied lot then can we say that you know it is it the place is a happy workplace it is um yes i wouldn't say that because you used word cribbing i think yeah uh, some uh, if I, if i look at some kind of criticism is happening in a constructive manner which is not cribbing yeah. then it is good for the organ and cribbing is something yeah, that that, you that, 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 that is different you know that yeah. is like an opinion or a point of view people give it could be you know it might not be positive it could be you know sometimes not positive it could be neutral it could be basically pinpointing i am saying that is the functional thing that companies uh, do but uh, you know what i'm saying generally people you know some so there are certain employees you know will start cribbing about no i don't like this or i don't like my workplace or workstation or the, the the you know the cooler is not working the ac is not working people crib about different or my boss told me this or my colleagues are behaving i'm seeing more people when they crib and you know that means they are unsatisfied and sometimes what happens is they might be unhappy for a certain other reasons and they crave for certain other reasons you know it's a way to vent it out it's way to vent it out and it's many a times it is um, uh, one it's a, it's a psychological process to vent out yes. but more importantly if they believe that there is no other medium to resolve certain things and therefore you know vent out is the only way to deal with a problem Probably. then obviously and majority of employees are doing that then obviously that you know kind of culture is not conducive to achieve great yeah, something wrong. yeah so then then obviously you need to fix certain things wherein um, you know people feel that whatever their grievances whatever their complaints whatever their issues are there is a, there is a you know kind of mechanism to deal with it right and if you are yeah. if you have that then they are likely to be less of uh, of uh, cribbing they they will there'll always be some set of people who who may not be happy with the work not necessarily yeah. because what work offers or what the particular organization culture offers but it could be just a stage in life right as i said we we are not two different individuals we carry office problem home and home problems to office oh, and problem problem. Yes. Right? so so i may have had a bad day or i may have may be facing lot of personal issues that may make me see certain things in the office in a 
in a very negative way right um, so they they will always be right i mean if imagine a organization where you know people are happy excited shouting getting things done and there could be one person in saying why are you guys shouting you 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 bothering me i, want I mean to work I, I, always, I, yeah people may prefer different things sometimes conflicting um, uh, yeah. things right so it, you know i think uh, everyone 100% happy and 100% engaged is is uh, very idealistic right i mean that's not, that doesn't exist no organization so it, it is, is not one size does not fit all actually yeah 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 so we are talking about you know cribbing and uh, uh, you know how it it relates to satisfaction level and all you know generally the other day i was talking to uh, you know another hr leader on happiness sure. he said that you know the uh, the senior professionals the, the the senior most professionals they are the biggest crib masters in any organization oh. they, they they crib a lot <laughs> do, do you agree to it <laughs> what no, has been your experience yeah, I, i i don't think i mean I, at least i have not observed any particular trend like this that a senior or a junior or a new or a old um you know kind of uh, crib in a different manner uh, of mm-hmm. course there are there are chats that happen over a water cooler and and stuff like that mm-hmm. of course in a covid environment is far lesser yeah. but uh, because you we really rarely tend to kind of connect with people in an informal manner because of yeah. whatever you know virtual constraints um but uh, uh, otherwise in a non covid kind of environment i think people do chat um, uh, pe- and that's a very healthy thing yeah. because as i said you know even even best of the products when i'm giving a kind of analogy of manufacturing if if best of the pro- products when they are made it's actually sometime a kind of competition uh, laid down to say ki ki find out faults in this product right the idea yeah. is to kind of improve th- on that right i mean if if somebody can find out a fault then you have an ability to fix it otherwise your product is not really best in the uh, yeah. kind of segment right yeah. so similarly in a culture if if there is a constructive criticism actually it's good because it helps you fix it further right i mean there there are aspects of culture that you feel majority of employees or or significant set of employees start to feel that this part of the culture is is something which is um, kind of um, uh, not aiding to the achievement of organize and objectives and something that needs to be fixed right so um, it is good to hear that I, i you know imagine an organization where nobody talks anything negative there is certain problem there is something wrong there i would yeah. say there is something wrong so you would want people to kind of feel uh, comfortable and safe in uh, in a in a culture where they are able to voice their view and it could be positive or a negative view as long as it is set in a said in a constructive manner or said in a manner that is to help uh, develop it further i think that is should be always welcomed so you you mean to say that people should be allowed to voice out their differences that's that's absolutely. what it very, takes very to important. be a, a happy workplace actually okay you know there absolutely. are certain organizations which are very which follow a very structured uh, rules or or they are in in terms of culture they are very uh, structured and formal there are certain organizations would be very you know informal they are more interested in work generally the relationship between the which is less hierarchical uh, which the relationship between the 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 ceo and the junior most employees could be very open there are different kinds of you know there are traditional set of companies there are new age companies and even new age companies i would say that some people some can be really very structured very toxic kind of thing obviously toxic is a place where it, there will be a lot of unhappy uh, yeah you know uh, people but what i'm saying is between structured and some you know or between formal or you know informal organizations do informal organization tend to be a happier lot on the or or you would not uh, agree or find that then you know it is relative yeah i think very difficult to generalize it to be very generalize. honest that formal organizations yeah. uh, if i understand what you're saying in a formal in formal context yeah uh, very difficult to say that informal is better than formal yeah uh, i wouldn't really say that 
um, there are there are many aspects that will that you will kind of assess right in terms that of will saying, trigger, yeah. yeah that will trigger and and that you will keep like for example you know most importantly right are you achieving your organizational objectives right if you're not then there is something that needs to be fixed it could be culture it may not be culture but you know yeah. that's one kind of lead you get right that yeah. If you're achieving, then something is going right. You're not achieving, then certainly something is not going right, right? So that needs to be fixed. Um, so that you kind of investigate. Then, you know, you look at generally um, individual employees and the passion that they're showing towards their, you know, their personal objectives, their team objectives, their organization yeah. objectives. Are they excited to continue to work? You know, a lot of people who um, even look at, um, uh, uh, you know, kind of, preferring to quit or not quit and uh, continue in the organization so your attrition yeah. level does indicate of course attrition is also a function of market and demand supply context so you know i, I wouldn't put too much of emphasis on that but it, it's one of those uh, i would say lead indicators right that um, uh, do i need to fix something right um, yeah so like that there are many aspects that you keep looking at and and uh, you know for example, I, let me give you an incorrect example of what yeah. we do, right, to assess engagement uh, level of employees. So we believe that there are multiple ways we need to kind of um, keep monitoring and assessing. Yeah. So we would do things like, um, you know, because of tech, there are certain kind of benefits. So I will, you know, at a very basic level, do a sense check every day in terms of what do you feel? What are you feeling, right? I mean, it's easier people log into systems and you know click not in itself it does not indicate anything but when you look at a data co collectively this is an important point what are you feeling right are you feeling good are you feeling not so good and i ask all employees every day basis so you know it's a significant set of data then there could be things like um, uh, we ask every every person who is preferring to quit the organization I ask yeah. him about his view in a form of exit interview. There's exit questionnaire as well. There's data that we receive. We go ahead also after people who have exited three months and have joined some other organization because you know yeah. there's a belief that okay maybe people still may worry and may not open up during their notice period. So maybe ex employees may may be able okay. to be more vocal. So we ask them. Then we do annual surveys, right? I mean, in terms of uh, asking people, in terms of what's your view on various aspects. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of plot that all data of ex-employees, resigned employees, everyday feedback and annual feedback. And then put that all thing together and you start to see a picture or a trend in terms of certain issues that needs to be fixed. There are always fixed. going to be issues that needs to be fixed. Yeah. And certain areas which are your strength areas that you need to work upon, right? So, uh, for example, um, uh, you know, we had concerns about, about um, inadequate recognition a couple of years back. Okay. Uh, our engagement scores are very, very good, right? And we have been fortunate yeah. in that sense. Uh, for last three surveys, we've had you know increasing engagement levels, and and they are very, very good scores. I'm, I'm very happy with that. Uh, but we had an issue in terms of uh, recognition not being adequate. People don't feel okay. adequately recognized. Not a unique problem. I think many organizations do face it. And we tried our own way in terms of addressing that. And, and you know, happy to kind of, then we saw in the next survey, people came back. And even in these other three areas, people did, did come back and spoke about saying that is being now addressed. And I think, addressed, okay. uh, you know, kind of uh, adequately recognized and people appreciate me more regularly than what they used to. So something that we feel happy about that there was maybe an aspect that needed some kind of improvement and we tweaked upon it and did improve on it. So, so I mean, that's how you kind of keep keep doing small, small things. Small, small things keep, which kind of improve on it, whether you call it then happiness or engagement. But basically, in my words, it's, you know, improvement in the engagement scores improvement. of that particular factor. You, you made a very interesting, uh, you know, you, I found it really interesting that you interview uh, people after you know three months yes they have left the organization have completed their notice period what has been the experience generally people are more vocal then you know is there any particular kind of uh, issues they talk about or 
um no no particular um, i mean i have not seen that they are differently vocal but that is more reliable data is how we look reliable at it data. we okay. get a lot of appreciation also from them right so it's mm. not like um because as i said i, I do feel um no, you, yes you are you are able to evaluate both the plus and minuses yes so people do come back sometime a feedback is about an individual manager uh, which could be both positive negative yeah. sometime it is about a product or sometime it could be some people may say okay you need to pay more attention to customer some sometime you somebody will say ki okay, you know i i really miss that particular process or a system that we had we so had, yeah. you know it kind of helps you get some sense on strength and weakness right and yeah. and as i said in itself one one particular question or feedback may not necessarily say much but when you look at it in collective sense and continuous yeah, basis, and holistic we do it yeah i mean whoever has left for example this is feb so whoever left in october i would send them the questionnaire right and then you know not everybody responds uh, but whoever responds and we get about 40% uh, responses then we kind of start to study in terms of what are they saying uh, and uh, sometime it could be even be whistle blowing right i mean it's very important yeah. then for me to uh, on a serious note also look at uh, look you know at, is something yes. inappropriate going on in the organization mm-hmm. So, you know, lots of it's and quite valuable. In financial sector, you need to be much more careful, I think, on those. Absolutely, absolutely. Tell me, you know, do you think the great resignation people uh, have been talking about it? The great resignation, or we are talking about, you know, the the movement that has been happening. Has that has it got anything to do with uh, happiness at workplace? or or is it just i you know it's i believe that you know it is more about that there is a demand in the market there are people there are places where people can move so people are moving so two things uh, one um, at incred we haven't really seen resignations going up our attrition yeah. actually in last 3 years 4 years have constantly come down it is below industry average right so i'm very pleased on that so in that sense i don't personally associate with great resignations but it yeah. is so much talked about so it has to be a phenomena right yeah. now the my particular theory around why companies are experiencing that especially yes you know, in it, IT, it sector that is what yeah 100% so uh, two two theories i have one as what yeah. you rightly said that there is a you know uh, it's a it's an umbrella shape kind of recovery right we quickly yeah. recovered as a as an economy and suddenly there is so much investment happening growth happening which which was a kind of a sentiment which was down which is everybody is now investing in it so people do have multiple jobs so you know kind of demand supply context has changed very rapidly especially in tech part of it right yeah it which is also in other part but especially in tech it is felt far more than many other sectors so yeah it's not just it it's also because you know uh, the tech talent is itself in much demand you know across sectors uh, that true. is where uh, certainly so that is one true second hypothesis i have is you know in last two years most of people have worked in a virtual setup right Yeah. Uh, many people have even joined organization have never seen their colleagues or never been to the office space right now it's not very easy to make people then associate with the organization yes, how do you create an emotional yes. connect right very yeah. rarely i would call a colleague over a zoom call and say ki ki kya chal raha hai it's always a purposive call i mean there is a meeting there is person is not able to open up or you you that personal touch is probably you know The yeah, so the relationship with the organization is very, very transactional, even with the colleagues. Yes. And to that extent, the hypothesis is that people are not as much connected with their current organization, and therefore, when a new opportunity comes, I mean, they're, frankly, they're it is one thing we need to always do when you arrive. So, so the engage, uh, you know, people's ability to engage with the organization purpose is far lower in a virtual setup. um i mean i know organizations are doing a lot what they can do within the virtual and those constraints that exist but still it is not as much as it used to be and therefore there is low level of engagement and therefore that's driving some bit of uh, additional attrition than the usual and maybe once offices restart and you know kind of uh, things come back to normal Yeah. Uh, i think uh, it will reduce a bit but that's a hypothesis i hold i, I don't have yeah. personal experience of of this as i said 
no but uh, you know it's i think it's an irony that uh, you know in the last two years organizations have woken up and are doing much more for their employees you know what probably they were doing when people were coming to offices probably you know employees were taken much for you know granted whatever could have been the reason yes. uh, but still the satisfaction level is going down it's it could be also because you know there has been change in mindset there has been societal changes people have been struggling in their own lives with different issues you know it is not about your own job it could be somebody in your in your family could have lost jobs somebody in your family would have fallen sick you know these are the things i think probably is creating a lot of <laughs> dissatisfaction and possible possible 100% um, uh, i mean there are there are many reasons because of which people are uh, may not be engaged the personal aspect cannot be ignored in that sense so is is there a learning in it for organizations when people start coming back to office is there anything that we need to redo or rethink you know how to keep the workforce more engaged you know when we now so see we will not completely everyone is saying that we will not completely move back to office it would be hybrid but yes certain people there would be at least some kind of interaction that will keep on yeah i think so uh, we need guys you know one lot of people are missing out that personal touch who have been yeah. around for many years in the same organization but don't feel that they have connected with their colleagues yeah. as well as they used to right uh, or or they don't really know the person as much because you know i don't know what's happening in his life he doesn't know what's happening in my life um, so that to that extent there is um, there's disconnect secondly i think there is a um, lot of people as i said new joinees those yeah. who have joined in covid times they don't associate with the people who have been in the organization neither the okay. those who have been in the organization associate much with the new joinees right yeah uh, so i think as a learning maybe i don't know if it's learning but certainly an initiative to bridge that communication and help people connect with each other some of the efforts or interventions are needed uh, especially when people start coming to office more regularly um, that how do you connect with people and help them you know gossip and crib and you know whatever i'm saying basically uh, start the informal communication which is very very important which is which is missing or which is eroded the in, basically the interpersonal relationship you know i think it is it is a great trigger point which makes people happy and unhappy both at you know at the workplace sometimes if you don't have a team or coworkers with whom you can you know gel with probably that makes you unhappy and you probably leave within a few months or that's true that's true i think complete virtual environment have lot of constraints in terms of making people connect with the coworkers as well as with the organization that's but generally yeah. you know we have seen that uh, you know we generally blame the uh, or we say the the boss has to be you know more uh, compassionate towards the employee and whenever an employee leaves the boss or the manager is blamed you know the reason could be other you know the reason could be that the boss was compassionate but the fellow coworkers were not do you see that often happening you know that's that's a, where people leave because you know generally it, it is very easy to say or I, i know people say that you know you leave for your bosses you know so always the boss is so it is the boss the scapegoat and uh, you know we don't uh, yeah I, i mean i have a problem generalizing anything because yeah. um, this is generalizing right people say ki people leave only for bosses i that's bosses, i don't think yes. it is true yeah. boss plays a significant role that also cannot be kind of uh, obviously yeah. that is also true right so yeah. boss's influence on um, uh, you know subordinates engagement is very very important but you know the way we many a times people portray it as that is the only thing and you know rest of the organization or the context does not matter i think that is taking it to another extreme and that's i wouldn't subscribe to that thought process so yes it is important that um, boss do influence your engagement you know it it does um, add to you know 
employee morale satisfaction makes people feel part of a kind of larger purpose all of it is something that boss can influence but that's not necessarily the only reason why people quit so how but much people... boss can influence i think the coworkers can also influence at the same rate probably that's true that's true it is also very highly again uh, organizational dependent how a particular job is structured as well as how what kind of cultural anchors that particular organization has yeah uh, all of those factors also matter in terms of the way you know it kind of plays out so yeah i mean uh, it has to be mutual right it cannot be uh, empathy cannot you be you know that the leaders need to be formally trained to be more empathetic and compassionate is is um, there a formal training that is required and probably that would lead to an more engaged or a happy so workforce. you know they say uh, empathy is 50% genetic right um, yeah. but that also obviously means 50% it is not and therefore no. training uh, uh, something can always be done the problem only in many of these is um it is almost looked at as a bandaid saying um, you know uh, abhi train kiya 3 ghanta ka training ho gaya ya one day ka training ho gaya abhi he'll be empathetic able to uh, result dikhao matlab it is not like a functional training yeah i mean it is empathy is far deeper feeling to be fixed in 3 hour training program right i mean yes it, it can be you can make people aware of the need to be more empathetic and it requires yeah. a process in which you will make him aware and that for some people it awareness may come uh, far more quickly for some people it may take many more months or even longer so but it's a process and organize if if empathy is something that they feel that needs to be fixed then you know that process they can go on that intervention they can run but the problem is you know run one day empathy workshop and say now my all my managers are empathetic i don't think um, you know it will yield any results it will just create a tick mark in hr person score card saying yes i did that but i mean i don't think it will give any it meaningful is, there is no immediate immediate results that one can expect i, I think, mean anything you do with attitude in the space of attitude right i mean yeah. that's knowledge skills attitude if you yeah. look at it in the space of attitude there are no quick fixes right you have to be patient and you have to work on it i mean you can't immediately start to say show me roi and you know you spend so much and now you do this you know as much as you shouldn't be doing training in the area of attitude just for the heck of it because you know baju wala organize kar raha something in empathy let's do it ourselves that's mm-hmm. also you know being stupid but at the same time you know you say ki okay, okay abhi teen din ka training kya empathy ka business results kahan pe hai that's also another extreme you can do that in the for, you know in the knowledge space to an extent in the skill space but not in the attitude space attitude space is really you you find a area in in your culture that needs to be fixed and you work on it over a period of time be patient and then periodically say are we moving in the right direction right i mean uh, is it is it kind of all the interventions we have done are they helping fix the problem over a period of time and they, you know because of which the the culture is kind of becoming more um, enabling for achieving your business results that's that's how one needs to look at it. i i think the bigger problem lies in acknowledgement and acceptance that there is a problem i think the hr people they face a problem that many of the leaders or c suits they don't they are not ready to accept that there is something wrong in terms of happiness or engagement in their respective teams yeah i mean deeper issue it's a, what is the hr mandate that you run i mean are yeah. you doing Uh, something just for the heck of it as consider yourself some behavioral specialist and start running our agenda or or a larger business team feels that okay you are a important person who can help them fix a particular problem right mm-hmm. so you, you know the, the process of making a senior team aware of a particular issue is also a gradual process you can't you know there is no aha moment i mean they seasoned professionals they've been running part of the organization for many years Uh, rarely there will be an aha moment of saying ah yo oh, you say empathy is a problem i agree empathy is going to solve all our problems in <laughs> life right? I mean, I, that's also another you know kind of dream world that we sometimes stay in right yeah so yeah it's, it's as you would want to influence the culture and work with people and leaders and managers you also work with senior leaders to make them aware of 
certain things and it could be mutual sometimes you may think you change your views right by yeah. listening to them and their their experience so it has to be you have to be open for that and collectively arrive at what do you think are the areas that needs to be fixed if you're not running their agenda you're running an independent agenda then yes what problems you're facing i mean stating are something that you will face where you think this is a problem and they just kind of you know brush it aside saying i don't think that is a problem right and and many of these chos or cisuts have been i think managing people they have the experience of managing people for many years you know Absolutely. and probably that counts yes that's count that counts so you you had see all of them are interested in achieving business results right if you are able yes. to establish clearly a link and create a business case for yourself i think you know rarely a business leader will say no i don't want to do it right i mean you to create a business case which is convincing enough that this is indeed um, you know kind of a part solution to the to the problems that exist and if they are convinced obviously they are going to support your agenda if they are not so convinced, happiness or 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 uh, you know engagement also has to be presented as a business case it's oh, probably then absolutely the acceptance is of the organization in different organization it may hold different levels of priority you can't yeah. say engagement is the number one because i am hr i mean genuinely need to understand uh, you know what how much of um, priority this particular item holds from the context of again organizational objectives maybe something else needs to be fixed or needs to be given more priority it cannot be only hr of course in the priority list hr shouldn't be absent right yeah. because then you know you you are in a way assuming everything is right which never is right mm -hmm. so there are areas that needs to be found out in terms of what will enable um, you know uh, you know more success or better alignment and and work on it right but yeah business ownership is very very critical you can't you know start something without knowing that business leaders are not completely convinced maybe spend more time convincing them rather than quickly get on to execution of that particular intervention it rarely will yield any results anyways okay uh, you know in over the years is since when you started uh, you know your career how has the nuances of you know happiness uh, changed uh, do you do you see there is a significant change that has happened because newer generation of people have <laughs> come into the workforce probably their needs and requirements are very different than uh, you know that is true i mean um, 100% uh, every generation i mean all of we when we entered into our um, workforce our parents used to say right that i worked in the same organization for 30 years yeah uh, rarely at somebody in our age would have worked that long or in same organization we would have changed few maybe my kids would change our tenure was little longer but today's i think yeah i mean people will see what derives value shorter than every day yeah what derives value in fact you know the way people work itself is going through a change right uh, or the way yeah. people associate the the employer employee relationship may go through a change tomorrow people will say okay i'll provide services to four different organizations for a fee i'll charge and that's how i will look at me or you know my contribution to the yeah. to those organization and they may not really look at it saying i'm part of the organization i am ready to do everything that i'm asked to do right people may kind of assume different roles so so yeah i, I mean generation wise people have different ways to look at it and you need to keep adapting to that as as an organization saying what kind of workforce i have and what kind of drivers uh, therefore i need to have so that they are better engaged so but but what changes have you have you uh, seen some kind of changes in terms of uh, you know happiness nuances or engagement the needs the requirements of the generations being different from what it used to be they have, are they more aspirational more growth oriented and that keeps the them the global happy. world has become a smaller place right so in that sense there are more global opportunities the aspiration levels have gone up the tolerance level has come down because obviously there's yeah. more economic growth opportunities uh, you know our parents if they were unhappy with the job they never thought of quitting a job maybe yeah. we think of quitting a job you know for somebody else the tolerance level is far lower right i mean it could mean that you know I, just last one week i'm bored with my job profile and therefore i need to do something else right so those are aspects even 
a larger context, right? Employment is one context, right? I mean, yeah. uh, means to uh, earn certain resources to live your life. That itself has gone through a change, right? I mean, people may say, I, I don't need to uh, do this to earn my living. I I'm can money, do yeah. So, you know, it, it's very different than what it was 20 years back, right? Where we wouldn't have really uh, either you start a business or start working with somebody else, right? As an employee. And there is no third really option. Um, yes. But yeah, I mean, people have gone through, uh, you know, there are more opportunities, more business growth, more. I mean, the tech has changed so much context, right? That it's possible for me to work for a, if I'm a tech person, I may be working for some company in Turkey or Brazil or Japan by sitting here. And, and, and or, or you can stay gig and still not be employed with one professional and be there. Absolutely. So be, absolutely. And do a good job and, you know, still be valued and you know, known for your this thing. Or people may change, you know, uh, like, for example, tech skills are morphing, right? I mean, the new technology coming. So, you know, people may have started with some COBOL programming and maybe doing something on Python today or, you know, something else, right? Yeah. As long as they have kind of moved and learned new skills, it's, it's possible for them to have even kind of transition to newer technology and therefore doing something completely different than what they used to do. So, you know, all of that was rarely possible then, right? Because technology didn't change as fast. It, it did change. We've seen our careers, may typewriters become extinct, but that was much slower pace. It took, yeah, it took probably ages and years to replace yeah. that. Actually, yeah. Personally, what does keep one? You know, what keeps Kamlesh Dangi happy? You know, so I think the work keeps... itself. The biggest motivator is work itself. I think I don't think if you if you're really passionate about what you're doing and driven by you know the purpose then that is the biggest motivator then whether the ac temperature is good or my seat, you know or seat is good or how my far is the drive is you know, a corner cabin or not doesn't yeah all that starts to matter much lesser it's i'm not saying it doesn't matter there they can be irritants but they don't really come in the way in terms of you know whether i'm engaged or no the work itself is always a, a biggest motivator i mean uh, then it kind of doesn't help your mind wander, right? Uh, because you are you're completely there and you kind of driven to achieve what you have set yourself to. So I, personally, I think that's that's always been the case. The work. Is the yeah. Case. The other day, I was talking to someone about around uh, you know about happiness. So he said that you know if if your workforce is engaged, not engaged in the sense means if they have got less free time, you know. They are going to be a happier lot. I wouldn't say that. I mean, that's. Uh, um, I, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't put it in terms of number of hours that you know everybody is just sitting. No, no, I'm saying that when they are in office, you know, you if you are involved with the work, <laughs> you know, you tend to be, you know, you have less time to think about other things. So generally, you will be, you know, you'll crave less and you will be more happier because you are focused on your work. You. I'm saying different, different, you know, different. Yeah, I know. I, I, I respect that view. Um, I, I would think a little differently. It, it's like if I'm, suppose I'm solving the same problem, right? Or, or the same thing coming to me, which I'm trying to solve and it's not getting solved. Or, or people are making the same mistakes. The process are not. Again being, and again, yeah. Repeated. So yeah. I'm, I'm repeating some stuff that I'm supposed to be doing. Then I, I'm not likely to enjoy it, right? I'm, so, you know, it's not, I wouldn't just put it in terms of, you know, he's more engaged, but, um, um, you know, so it's not like, you know, people are at desk and not moving and, and they're there. Then, yeah. that would be another extreme of, of a view, which also I would subscribe. Great Kamlesh. So that was Kamlesh Dangi talking about happiness today with us. Thank you, Kamlesh, for taking your time for this show. It was a pleasure you. having you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, HR. Thanks.